What is the best type of ashwagandha that you can find on the market? Is it the famous KSM 66? Is it sensory or? Hey, what's up, Greg here from your inception. Welcome to my channel. If you wanna learn top secrets about nootropics or supplements, then subscribe below to start your journey. Today, we're gonna talk about different types of ashwagandha that you can find on the market. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you which is the best type that you should go for. Now, ashwagandha is also named Indian ginseng, and there's a good reason for that. Um, it's one of the most potent herbs on the market uh, that you can currently use uh, that can help you relieve stress or it can even help with anxiety. Now, but those are not the only two benefits of this potent herb. Now, if you wanna know more about the benefits, then check the other video that I created about specifically benefits and you can find up here. But now let's focus on different types. Now, if you ever tried ashwagandha, if you ever bought it um, in different supplements, then you probably came across three different types. Either it was KSM 66, which is a branded extract. It may be sensorial, another branded extract, or it was an extract of the whole plant or herb in this specific case. And that's kind of the most common use type of ashwagandha. Now the question is, which of those is the best one? Well, let's find out. By the way, guys, have you ever tried ashwagandha? And if you did, which type did you use? And did it work for you? Let me know in the comment section below. So the first factor you need to check is if the extract is organic or non-organic. Now, personally, I prefer organic herbs uh, just because uh, you know they're higher quality and especially if you're gonna take it for a longer period, um, then of course this is a much better uh, version to take. Um, of course, organic extracts are usually more expensive, obviously. I mean, we're talking about supplements that you, you know, put in your body every day. So it's very, very important to go with high quality ingredients. Now, the second question you have to ask yourself is either you're gonna use standardized extracts or you're gonna use an extract of the whole herb. Now, the thing is with ashwagandha, most supplements actually contain this extract of the whole herb. Usually they use the root of the herb. Um, and the reason for that is because this is the most affordable type of ashwagandha that you can find on the market. Obviously, I mean, they just put an extract of the whole herb in, not just a really strong standardized extract. And because of that, the whole herb is usually less potent. Usually it's really hard to find studies, scientific studies using such herbs. It's kind of hard to say what is the optimal daily dosage because who knows. And overall, it's really lower quality and less potent. So as you can see, I'm not a big fan of uh, such extracts because of the mentioned reasons. Now, if this is something you just wanna you know, experiment with, uh, try it uh, just to see how it works, yeah, you can go with such, a, such an extract, but in general, I would try to avoid such extracts and actually most high quality supplements, high end supplements on the market do not contain this version or such a version uh, of an entropic. It is just below any kind of standards. So basically the last option we have available is standardized extract. And the cool thing about standardized extracts is that you can actually find two types. It can be branded or non-branded. And with ashwagandha, usually, actually companies use a branded version, which is either KSM 66 or the other one, so-called Sensoreal. And the reason why most companies use these two uh, extracts is because they're more bioavailable, uh, they have supporting science, um, and not that more expensive than non-branded variations. By the way, guys, if you wanna check my full experience with ashwagandha, click on the video up here. So what's the difference between KSM 66 and Sensoreal? Now, KSM 66 is probably the more popular version, at least based on my experience and based on my research. I'm not saying this is you know, necessarily true, but I most often see KSM 66. Uh, I may be wrong, so yeah, it's kind of hard to say. However, the cool thing about KSM 66 is that it has about 13 or something like that, 13 supporting studies, scientific studies, um, done using this specific extract. Um, so if you're gonna take KSM 66, then you definitely know what kind of effects to expect, what kind of benefits you may get at a certain dosage, what kind of side effects you need to worry about, and so on. In general, this is one of the safest um, type of ashwagandha that you can find on the market. And of course, one of the most bioavailable type. And if that's the only version available to you, then of course, go for it. There is no doubt you're not gonna miss anything. Um, so it's really, really high quality. 
Now, the cool thing about KSM 66 is that in most studies, they used actually 300 milligrams of this extract two times per day. Um, so for a total amount of 600 milligrams of ashwagandha. Now, if you wanna know what's the optimal dosage, then you kind of need to check the studies to see, you know, what kind of effects to expect. Uh, but in general, uh, somewhere between 300 to 600 milligrams per day should do the trick for you. By the way, if you like this video, please press the like button below. So how about Sansoril? Well, a fun thing about Sansoril is that it comes in two variations, an organic one and non-organic. Again, I prefer the organic versions. You can also find non-organic in some supplements. And Sansoril is actually the most potent version of ashwagandha, even more than KSM 66. But Honestly, I tried both and it's really hard to see any difference. I mean, yes, on a scientific level, if you go into details, yes, probably scientists can see the differences, uh, but for an average user, uh, I think it's impossible to see any kind of difference. And the cool thing about it is that you can take a lower dosage, somewhere between 125 milligrams to around 500 milligrams per day, uh, if your main goal is to reduce your stress level. So compared to KSM 66, it kind of seems that a sensor oil is a bit more potent, so you can take a bit lower dosage, which in the end may make it a bit uh, less expensive for you guys. By the way, guys, we have revealed seven secrets about nootropics that no one else will tell you about. To get them, download our free handbook below. So the final question is, which is the best ashwagandha for you guys? Um, and which is the one that I like the most? Well, honestly, I like both types. Um, I like KSM 66 and I like sensor oil. It's kind of hard to see the difference. I would personally avoid non-organic versions and I would personally avoid uh, all kind of other extracts, non-branded extracts, uh, especially if there's a whole herb, uh, because it's really hard to say what's the optimal dosage. And maybe the last advice for me is, if you find ashwagandha in a nootropic stack or any kind of other supplements, um, and you don't know the exact dosage, but it's part of a proprietary blend, then honestly, I wouldn't take it um, because you kind of don't know the, the exact amount of this compound in such a supplement and then it's kind of hard to say what kind of effect you can expect or potentially if some side effects happen, you know, why did it happen? Is it because of shaganda or maybe some other thing that's in the formula? All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Don't forget subscribing to this channel. Follow your on Facebook, Instagram. And I hope to see you soon again. Take care.